Alright, in this video we're going to do some more examples of finding derivatives using the chain rule. So, in part A we'll find the derivative of 2x to the 1 3rd minus 6x to the 5 thirds, all of that cubed, times 4x squared minus 5x to the 1 3rd power. So, again, the first thing I think when I see this is, um, I see stuff with the variables in parentheses times stuff with the variables in parentheses. So that tells me we're going to have to use the product rule. And I think this one will get a little long, so I'll try to squeeze it all in this line, but I don't know if I'll be able to. So, um, All right, so we've got to take the derivative of one part, leave the other alone, put a plus sign, and then just kind of rev you know switch that out. Um, so I'm going to take the derivative of the first factor. Okay, well, so to take the derivative of 2x to the 1 3rd minus 6x to the 5 3rd cubed, the first thing we would have to do is the 3 would have to come out front. So then we would leave all the inside alone. So 2x to the 1 3rd minus 6x to the 5 3rd. Um, we would have to subtract 1 from the exponent. But now I have to do the chain rule. I have to take the derivative of the stuff on the inside. Well, the 1 3rd would come out front and multiply by the 2, and that would give us 2 over 3x. We would have to subtract 1. So we're subtracting 3 over 3, which would give us negative 2 over 3. And then minus, okay, we'll have to do the same thing for when we take the derivative of 6x to the 5 thirds. Um, we'll get 6 times 5 over 3. Well, 6 times 5 is 30 over 3 will give us 10x. If we subtract 3 over 3, that'll give us to the 2 thirds power. So now we've taken the derivative of the first factor using the chain rule. And again, we would just leave the other factor alone. So 4x squared minus 5x to the 1 3rd power. And um, let's see, so now a uh, plus sign for our product rule. Now I'm going to leave the first factor alone. So 2x to the 1 3rd minus 6x to the 5 3rd power cubed. We'll just leave that part alone. And now if we take the derivative of the second factor, again, we've got to use the chain rule. So the 1 3rd will come out front. We leave the inside stuff alone, so 4x squared minus 5x. We have to take 1 away from the exponent. So uh, 1 3rd, so 1 over 3 minus 3 over 3 will give us negative 2 over 3. And then if we take the derivative of the inside, so the derivative of 4x squared will be 8x, so 2 times 4 will give us 8x to the first, and then minus 5. All right, there's not a lot to do here in terms of, uh, I mean, you could start factoring things out. Um, I, let's, let's don't do that in, just in this case, but, uh, you know, you could rewrite this stuff maybe with positive exponents at least. So you have 3 times 2x to the 1 3rd minus 6x to the 5 thirds squared, all multiplied. So we could write 2 over 3x to the negative 2 thirds as 2 over 3 x to the positive 2 thirds, then minus uh, 10x to the 2 thirds, not going to do anything to the other part. And there's our big plus sign. Um, again, all of this stuff in the second line here is being multiplied. So uh, notice we've got a, 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 um, a negative exponent. So I'm going to write all of that as a fraction. So the 2x to the 1 third minus 6x to the 5 thirds cubed. We'll leave that part alone. The 3, we can just stick that in the denominator. The 4x squared minus 5x to the negative 2 thirds. Well, we can also put that in the denominator and just make the exponent positive 2 thirds. Um, and then, let's see, what would we be left with? We would be left with the 8x minus 5. And I think that's where I would uh, finish it here. So nice, big, messy derivative. So can you imagine doing that using the definition? It'd be pretty terrible. So um, all right, so again, I think a lot of it, just when you start, it's just recognizing um, you know, product rule, quotient rule, just chain rule immediately. Which rule do I have to use? Again, I see a product. I know we have to use a product rule. And when I go to kind of take the derivatives of the individual factors, well, that's where the chain rule comes into it. 